The fuselage of the Photon is 45 inches long, which is one section of foam board tubular fuselage, which is 15 inches long, which starts like this, square on both ends. And then a second piece, which is 30 inches long, in the rear, which stays square in the front. And I've just chosen to put a ramp on mine in the back, just for simplicity. You can finish that how you like. The outside diameter of this version is just a hair over two inches. And that is just about right to accommodate a 2200 milliamp hour battery, which is my battery of choice, inside with just a little space beside it for a speed controller, wiring, and just maneuvering room. You could adjust the size of the fuselage to your liking, but do keep in mind the smaller you make this diameter, the more difficult it is to make these bends and keep this straight without causing wrinkles in the bending process. The paper scoring interval inside the fuselage tube is one and a half inches on the top, bottom, and sides, which gives a square fuselage section. Please reference the fuselage tube building video for the significance of that interval. And as all fuselage tubes that I recommend, a one half inch corner bend radius. This is where the paper has been stripped away in all four corners. First, after you've made your tubular fuselage sections, the 30 inch for the tail and 15 inches for the nose, you want to taper down the nose to conform more closely to the profile of your motor on its mount, which in this case is a one by one inch square of metal plate. All this wasted space around here is awesome for cooling, but it's terribly ugly and worst of all, it's very unaerodynamic. The noob tube you see here uses a two inch tubular fuselage, the same motor mount but has all this open space. This plane was designed for with one thing in mind and that's to be easy to build. So it's a long straight piece for the fu tubular fuselage. We're going to taper it down for the photon. To determine where to start the taper, think about how your battery is going to go in the hatch and slide forward. You wouldn't want to make this fuselage too narrow at a point where it would restrict the battery being able to fit forward in the fuselage. I like to taper mine starting at 6 inches rear of the nose. So this will be the very front of the paint plane and at 6 inches back we'll start the taper down to the 1 inch square where the motor mount will go here. Another consideration to take before proceeding is to whether you want to mount the motor inside the tubular fuselage which is a cleaner appearance on the outside and does elevate it up a bit off of the landing surface here but it presents an extra face of the fuselage tube edge for drag. Conversely, you may decide to mount the motor mount exteriorly like this, which puts the, the side of the motor and the mount very close to the landing surface. So you may put a skid or a little bump here to elevate it off the ground a little bit, or if you land on very pristine landing surfaces, it might not be a problem. So I'm going to taper this down on the top, and then as viewed from the top, I'm going to taper it in towards the center. So like this, and like this. I've marked the tubular fuselage six inches rear of the nose on all four corners. To establish the vertical profile of the tubular fuselage, place the motor mount however you have it against the tubular fuselage, mark the sides here, and that will be the ultimate width of the total fuselage. Since we're going to fold these two sides in, subtract the thickness of this foam board here from this mark that you've made. So approximately here and here. This is where we're going to actually cut from the inner marks back to the corner and that inner mark back to this corner. That will ultimately result in a fuselage nose that is exactly as wide as the motor mount itself. To establish the side profile of the fuselage, this is the left side, here's the nose, this is the top, and this is the bottom. Hold your motor mount to the fuselage and then mark where you want this to come to, right here. Additionally, since this top layer of foam board is going to fold down and add additional thickness to this mark, subtract one more thickness of foam board below that. Repeat that on the other side here. First I'll cut the bottom of the fuselage from the corner mark to the inner marks here, there to there. I like to use a utility knife, use your cutting implement of choice, be sure you use a brand new sharp blade. And for accuracy it's useful to use a straight edge such as this yardstick and place it where you'd like it at the mark and use a clamp or a 
clothespin or a friend to help hold that and then you can make a nice sharp accurate cut. This cut goes all the way through the foam board, all the way through both layers of foam board. So that's the outer fuselage tube and the joiner that you've created inside here. So this is two thicknesses. Now the bottom fuselage cuts have been made. This will be the remaining part of the fuselage as it's tapered. Hang on to this piece for now, and I'm going to cut the side fuselage profile cuts. This is the right side. I've made my one inch mark here, deducted the thickness of foam board, so made it just that much shorter by thickness of foam board, and the cut will be only through the paper and tape here, not through the foam. Now I'm going to make the side fuselage taper cuts from the six inch point here down to the one inch point at the nose, deducting that additional thickness of foam board so we end up with a one inch profile at the very tip. Here are the side cuts made right here and right here and this is the part that's going to fold down. Now there's nothing wrong with cutting right along this edge, just cutting the foam right out here and then just squishing that down and gluing it in place. What I actually like to do is a little trick where I peel off this paper and tape, peel that back all the way up to this edge so that provides some paper and tape that you can then fold around the side of the fuselage nose for additional strength. It also seems to give a nicer uh, conforming curve at the corners. So that's just done by grabbing the corner and peeling it right back like that, right? And finally there's the top of the fuselage. We'll mark that full width right here on the sides and there's no cutting on the outside here. What you want to actually do is to peel the paper and the tape only off of this foam board all the way back past the corner and right to where it intersects internally with this mark and then back to the corner mark here. This is where we're actually going to make the cut. And for this, it's often easy to just use a, a little uh, blade like this and then just very carefully use this as your straight edge and cut it right back to the corner like that. So I've got that paper crisply folded back right at the line mark there and the mark right here and I'll just take this blade and carefully cut right along the fold make a couple of passes if necessary and then you can just remove this wedge of foam right here and then repeat that on the opposite side, folding this back so it meets the mark and the mark back here. Cut the foam. So that completes the top fuselage flap and you'll see what happens is that the top folds down to here and then these flaps will wrap around. And once glued that will provide a fairly smooth transition radius around here. Also the paper and tape will be doubled in these sort of high stress areas for not outright crashes but semi rough landings and as well uh, stresses from the power plant will be dispersed a little bit better amongst the uh, additional reinforcement here. We're going to repeat that similar principle on the bottom of the fuselage by peeling back this corner and this corner like that all the way back to the corner marks and then incise the foam here to allow the sides to fold and taper inwards like this. And so these two little wedges of foam come out like that. And so now the bottom has its taper. So these sides will fold in like this together and then that tape will fold over. And this will fold over and then from the side, this is the top, this is the bottom, this is the left side, these will fold down and overlap. And so now it's merely a matter of dressing up the uh, foam on the sides if you need to carve off a little bit more or sand it just so it fits to your liking. All like this. You can do that and then it's time to hot glue it all together. I like to start at the bottom and glue the actual structural part of the foam down in this joint here first with ordinary hot glue. So right along here and right along here. I'll leave the flaps for now. So once this is glued together, then the second application of glue will incorporate these flaps and hold them together. And once you've got these two joints together, it's time to close the flap. So I'm going to close the left one here like I've already done the right. And that can be done with uh, hot glue. 
and I recommend two lines. One that actually holds the paper back here where the joint is for additional strength and then a very thin layer close to the edge, as close as you dare but without going over and that will be the part that adheres the paper and tape to the layer underneath it. I'm going to make a strip down in there and then another thinner strip right at the edge and then fold that down wet fingers help and then you just kinda help continue to smooth that down as it cools and hardens and it'll lay down not perfect but pretty darn smooth now it's time to glue the upper joints so I'll glue one side at a time That, hold that down and if you spill any little specks like that over the side where the paper needs to come down but before you're ready to fold down the paper go ahead and let that cool and then uh, just scrape it right off so that you have a nice smooth surface so that when this goes to adhere down it, it remains nice and smooth now I'm going to go ahead and apply a very thin layer of hot glue on the inside of this flap close it down and repeat on the opposite side Then you'll be left with a fairly nice smooth side, radius curves. You can use some scissors to trim up if you've got a little bit of a overhang here. Um, clean that all up and you'll see now that it's tapered down. The motor mount and motor can be applied and it's virtually a perfect profile there. I like to use two-sided foam packing tape applied here and just stick that on the bottom and then route your uh, wiring as you desire either through the corner right here or cut an extra hole and then you'll be ready to affix this section to the main fuselage back here. For durability and also to make it look a little bit better after all this tapering work I like to use a similarly co colored duct tape, duck brand, and I recommend duck brand. It seems to wrinkle less when it heats up in the sun and so ultimately after the duct tape application it looks something like this. Not perfect but pretty smooth and looks decent at a distance. I've wrapped a final band around here. If, if you need to ever trim something like this off and you want to do a nice clean job of it, here's a tip is you can take a straight edge like a ruler, put it there, and then just use a razor blade, cut it right there, and then just peel it right off, and you have a nice straight cut.